Hi, I'm Bam Bam, and this is another podcast. So uh, I have my guest here, which is another podcaster. The reason I brought her on is because I started following her podcast, and I noticed some pictures, and I was reading her description, and I noticed that she did a divorce party. I've heard of this before. Back in 2015, I, I knew a guy who was an event planner who did divorce parties, and he said that like a massive, like 80% of his clientele was divorce parties. So... I thought it was pretty cool because, you know, if you get divorced, instead of, you know, crawling up and cuddling up in a pillow and pissing all over your fucking bed because you're so goddamn drunk or too high on mushrooms, fuck all that bullshit. Fuck that smoke. You hire an event planner and you have a divorce party. Yes. Get some wigglers all over. If you're a female, you get some wigglers all over your fucking cheeks. If you're a man, you go motorboating. Have a divorce party. It's... It sounds really cool. I've never met anyone who had one. So when I was looking at her stuff that she had a divorce party, I contacted her. Her, um, her podcast is Sayeth Loud Podcast. As in, you know, say if. Like old school medieval times. Sayeth if I beeth. You know, um, I'll put the description. Not the description. I'll put the link in my description to her podcast and that that's not all she does really she has all kinds of things going on if you hit her link tree and you go to her website she has a clothing line all kinds of links all kinds of things this is a busy busy very busy woman oh she's got a book she's got events she's got a blog she's got um services squad podcast production so much going on here so just you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to read anything off her website. It's just a lot going on here. She's a very busy person. Uh, very well-rounded. It was it was a fun conversation. We talked about the whole divorce party and everything and then what happened, why she got divorced. And then uh, other things, life stuff, pretty random conversation. It's nice. It was a good conversation with a podcaster to podcaster. I'm going to put her links below. Go to her Instagram. Hit her link tree. Check her out. Enjoy the podcast. Bam. But whatever I can find that piques my interest and entertains the fuck out of my mind. talk about this one this topic we have here all right well you let me know when you're ready i'm ready i've been recording i'll start whenever welcome to my podcast okay let's let's do it what's your podcast name my podcast is say it loud say it loud what's it about yeah so um i was well the name came i was in london a couple years ago and i saw something like on the street like a sticker or something that said (laughs) say it and i was like oh wow that looks really cool (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then I went home and I was like, let me look it up because I like words. I just love words. So I was like, let me go home and look up what this means. And it means to say something in the third person. And then um, when it was time to start my podcast and my company, I was looking for a name. <laughs> and I was like, what better than say it? Like, it means to say something in the s- third person. And that's what you do. You're speaking for people and you're branding and you're using your voice. Uh, so that's where Sayeth came from. And then loud is because I really believe that if you have something to say, you might as well say it loud. So that's where the name came from. Well played. <laughs> you, it you, took a lot of thought. You, Some people don't know that. They're just like, oh, it's just called say it loud. I'm like, no, it's Sayeth. It means something. And, say uh, it then hit uh, it from here. It's like king times. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm an English teacher in my real life. <laughs> and you, <laughs> you're, my, ris- you're risking your career to do a podcast? Uh, well, you know, I love teaching and I enjoy it, but I felt creatively like I was stunted. Like I'm an artist inside, mm. you know, and, um, yeah, but you don't tell people a... in your career about it, do you? No, no. I feel like it's a bit much. I don't tell my mom. I mean, my mom knows I have a <laughs> podcast. I tell her I don't listen to it because it's kind of crass and crazy and well, we talk about I'll... sex a lot. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know what? It's, it's as long as you don't use your real name or mention, um, just say your career choice within your podcast kind of interconnect it if you keep it separate yeah like i know you, i mean i, know I feel like can, it's people it's can, healthy conversation though so yeah. i don't feel like it's anything bad that i'm saying it's just you, you know don't, but what it's it's it's, it's kind of like at a certain 
certain jobs that say, oh, it doesn't uh, fall under our, our vision or moral values of our company. It's like, oh, go fuck yourself, buddy. As soon as I clock out and you stop paying me, I'll do whatever the fuck right. I want. <laughs> yeah, pretty right? much. That's, that's, that's you, the feeling. Yeah, you that's can. The you, feeling. you can. I've heard lawyers talk about a news radio um, analyst will talk about how, yeah, they can if they if they don't don't feel it fits with their you know company structure. And I think that's the stupidest thing in the world. If you're not paying me, I'm on my own time, and I'm not mentioning you at all. I'm not tying it in, like unless I'm promoting it at work or to my clients. You have nothing to say what I do on my own time. I just feel like I work for you. You don't own me. Like. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. So outside of as long as I do my job and I do my job well, um, I don't feel like you own me creatively. You don't own me intellectually and you don't pay me enough to act like, you know, I represent what you're doing. Good so for you. that's that's my thoughts. <laughs> I, I on think that. you're OK as long as you don't put your real name on it or promote yeah. it. Uh, there's 600 million podcasts out there. So good luck finding that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm OK with that. So. I was talking to you because I was going on your Instagram and there was something I yeah. saw that really piqued my interest. I want to hear all about this because I don't think yes. a lot of people think it's a thing. But you had a divorce party. I did. I did. I did. It was it was a lot of fun, too. It was one of the best parties I ever had. <laughs> um, I'm so free. I got divorced. Well, I got divorced about uh, eight years ago, and um, I said that um, it, I, I felt like I had lost uh, 225 pounds. I did lose 200 pounds um, and of a person, and um, I'm a person. and I wanted to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and I wanted to celebrate. Mm -hmm. And my friends were all like, "What do you want to do?" And I was like, "I want to have a party, and I want to wear a tutu. That's what I want to do, and I want to eat food on the side of the road." You know what I mean? Whatever's in that food truck at two in the morning, that's what I want to eat in a tutu. <laughs> that's how I want to celebrate. And they were like, are you serious? And I was like, I'm definitely serious. Uh, so I planned a divorce party and we um, went to a strip club. We got limos. We drank. We ate food on the side of the street. And I wore a tutu. And I wore a tutu. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. That's what I wanted. What, um, so yeah. So... Gonna... Some people didn't like the idea. Some people said that that was kind of mean. And, um, mean, you know, <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know what the uh, standard, typical divorce celebration is. This is 2021, not 1952. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was like, don't did, post did your, did your Did your friends also tell you that women should stay in the kitchen too? Um, no, but they were just like, you know, I think they, I think they wanted me to be sad. I think people wanted oh, me to you... be sad and like not look good and stay home and cry. And, you know, I'm a mom, I have children, like I'm in a strip club for my divorce party. But I didn't, I just felt like a weight was lifted and I was like, let's celebrate. And this is what I want to do. So this is what we're going to do. It was great. I had a cake, mm. I had champagne, I had strippers. I feel like, you know what? Why not? Well, I was. I looked it up. I go. I just googled divorce parties, and then this thing that came out that that defined it. It says, uh, "Are divorce parties a thing?" Then it says, uh, "Women and men use divorce parties as a rite of passage to their new life." It says uh, Dory Schwitz, a d divorce meditator and coach for Divorce Harmony. It's also an opportunity to celebrate with your friends and family that have been there with you every step of the way. Right. So yeah. See. So I didn't it's even letting know that. Go. I just. Yeah. It's. It's a celebration of letting go. It's a celebration of your new life. It's finding yourself. It's having a good time after like not having a good time for so long or whatever your situation is. I, I think I think it should be a thing and I think it should be a bigger thing. I think it's going to I feel up. like it should have been just as big as the wedding <laughs> if it was up to me, <laughs> so, you know. No, I, I heard about this back in like 2015 or something and when I was doing a lot of, uh, I was a, like a media freelancer mm -hmm. and and i met this guy who was an event planner we were talking and, and this was back in 2015 when I was, I was like what kind of events do you do and he goes mainly divorce parties I'm like what and he's like yeah, yeah. He's like, you'd be shocked a lot of women wanted to uh, like have a divorce party right after to kind of get over it and he's like that's mainly like 80 percent of his his bookings are divorce parties and that was fucking um... six years ago yeah, I feel like, you know, I feel like more women are feeling empowered. Um, and I think men should have divorce parties too, don't get me wrong. I just feel like you should feel empowered 
to like go through something like that, come out on the other end and enjoy it. And it doesn't have to be like a sad thing. It's just like this didn't work. It didn't work. And that's it. We're going to have a good time and get on with it. <laughs> so if you don't mind me asking, why did you get divorced? What's the story behind that? I feel like there was like multiple reasons. It wasn't just one reason. Um, for me, it wasn't just one reason. I don't know what he will tell you. He's, he will tell you that I just left. That's what he'll tell you. That she just upped and left one day. I wanted the divorce. He didn't want the divorce. I wanted the, I wasn't happy. And I was just like, if I had to stay in this for the rest of my life, like, I'm not going to be like, like, I'm just going to be miserable. And so I just thought we outgrown each other. And then, you know, the lying and the cheating didn't help. Um, oh, that didn't help. Really. We, <laughs> that, we grew apart, but the lying and cheating didn't, didn't help. help. Really. I mean, that was like the icing <laughs> on the cake. Like that didn't help either. But I, I who, feel like who was the liar and the cheater? Him or you? Yeah. But I think, I think like, sometimes, like, people could get away with that and get over that. I do. I do think that some couples can get over the lying and the cheating. Like, I, I, I feel like some people can put up with it. But for me, it was like, okay, you're lying and you're cheating. I'm the breadwinner. My goals are different from your goals. I don't really like you anymore. We put all that stuff together. It's like, why am I here? I don't think many people would like many other people cheating on them. It's a little, yeah. unless you're like, I, I had um, swingers on my podcast. They're, they're called the Front Porch Swingers. They have their own podcast. You should check it out. I love listening to it. It just blows my mind. But they're not cheating, are they? If no, they because agree it, to be swingers, right? <laughs> it's a mutual understanding. This is what they wanted. They were both, right. uh, the, she was with a guy who was, like she said, too vanilla, like boring, basically. And she wanted more excitement, so she left him. And the, the, the guy, in the, the swinger guy, he was married four times. It didn't work out with oh, wow. Yeah, and he said the same thing. They're just not like as exciting as, as I want it to be, and they, they weren't willing to open up and try new things, whatever. Then they found each other, and yeah, it's a mutual understanding. And I says, you know, this is great. It's like you cracked the code because you can both go have your fun, but you live the normal lives that everyone does. You come home, watch movies, dinner, you live together, yeah. go to bed together, but you share each other, right? You took jealousy out of the equation, and like over 75% of marriages in North America... And because of cheating, right? Right. So if you take right. away the cheating part, what number will that percentage go down to? <laughs> right. Yeah, I just had a conversation with someone about that because they said, would you be in like a poly, what is that called? Polymor? Polymory? Polymor? Poly, yeah, it's yeah. Anyway, yeah, they said, would you be in a relationship? Or... Yeah, they said, would you be in a relationship like that? And I said, yes. And they all looked at me like I had two heads. And I was like, well, a lot of you are in relationships like that now. You just don't know what the other person's doing, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> right? Some of it, they don't have consent, but, like, they're living a whole nother life. So I would rather know than not know and set my expectations. Yeah. Or you can such. join in or whatever agreement you guys come upon. But Yeah, it, but a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, society doesn't think like that, though. They're getting there. It's starting to be more accepted. Yeah. Those people, people are out there. I'm, I'm pretty sure you right. know a lot of people that are that way but they don't think it'll be accepted so they don't have, they don't let people know so right but um uh but, 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 why do they got to use that word poly something it's such a technical word why can't they just say like like you know so so much more simple like we used to say like an open relationship right <laughs> that's all it is it's an open you know, relationship but everybody's using is, terms everywhere it's freaking me out i noticed people that have open relationships these days are lasting longer in their marriages and in their relationships, they're the people that don't. Yeah, that's true. That's, <laughs> I'm starting. I'm starting to get to know these people. That's why I had them on my podcast. I really wanted to talk to them about that. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of people just are are saying that they don't want it, but when they have an open relationship, they're making the. I just feel like you can't force someone to want to be with you, right? No. You can't hold them hostage. So even if it's open and they choose, you know what? I'm happy where I'm at. That should be enough. Versus you forcing them to say, well, you can't do this or you can't do that. I want someone to be in a relationship with me because they want to be, not because they feel like they're obligated to be. Yeah, that that's just be, me. That seems to be the case called settling. That I, just I know, seems. I know, grew up with that, a lot of guys that, like that. You just stayed with them for whatever reason and their girlfriends are monsters. Ugh. Yeah. And, and they're getting abused in relationships and they think like, oh, I can't do anything. I just have to stay here and take it. Oh, man. It happens more often than you think. It, I know, I know it does. I'm just not, I'm just not um, accustomed to it. You can say it's just not around me. There's a lot of things, yeah. issues that are going around 
and I hear it on the news and I hear people talking on the radio and podcast and, there, and there's all these issues of, of some sort, whether it's personal or relationships or whatever it is that's, that's happening to these people. And I don't understand it because I don't know anyone like this around me, right? Yeah. I don't know anyone who yeah. has serious depression. I don't know anyone uh, that's in a really shitty relationship. I don't know anyone who's been divorced. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I have, yeah. I have a, 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 I know a lot of people, but either they're not telling me things it's, or I don't yeah. know. I just, I'm not used to it. Yeah. So I can't understand. That's fair. I can't understand that's something fair. that's not in my life. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I don't really feel like divorce is that bad. I, I mean, I think it's bad when you're going through it. I think people make it worse than it is. Oh. I like, it, it's okay if two people don't want to be together anymore. It's not the end of the world. <clears throat> what did it that's cost just you? my opinion. Huh? What did it cost you? Was it mutual or, or was it like, oh, fuck you. Yeah, oh, no, it, it, it cost me a lot. <laughs> it cost me a lot. Oh, it cost God. me more because I was the breadwinner and it was my house. <laughs> but you filed so. for divorce. I thought if you're the one that files, you have the upper hand. Um, to some extent, yeah, but then the financials and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it cost me more than I wanted, but it was worth my sanity. Sometimes you got to pay for your sanity. <laughs> you didn't, uh, sorry, I vape too much. <coughs> no, that's okay. <coughs> oh, oops. So when you're at, when you're at your divorce party, I saw the picture of that stripper. What a stud, eh? <laughs> That was a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah. I love to. I, I want to just get invited to divorce parties now and just like go there as like your entourage. <laughs> <laughs> you could you could be in a the, you have experience so you could be at the divorce party uh, event planner. Yeah, yeah, I think that um, I think it would be like a whole lot of fun. And I then bet. especially here in New York, there's like so many cool places to go and visit and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so we. Um, there was like a divorce party package that you can buy for the strip club. <laughs> so that's what we got. We got a divorce party package. Like you get like a lap dance and a tiara, everything like a bachelorette, but you're not a bachelorette. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. You can package. buy like a package. Yeah. You get like champagne, you get VIP have, seating. Did they have like an extra plus package where it's like, Kate, okay, if you get this package, he's going to be seven inches. If you get this package, he's going to be 10. If you get this, he'll be 12 no, inches. No, <laughs> but you might be on to something. <laughs> you got it. You got it for, for the extra couple inches. You got to add that to the package. I feel like this could be a thing. I feel like this could be a thing. And then and then you could have something called. Um, uh, what's the word? Hold on. I got to think of something clever. Reve and then get something called a revenge package. Where if like, depending how malicious you are, like how badly you want to get back at your ex that, you, you know, you got divorced from, they will, they will have like a, like a photographer who'll do a photo shoot with the strippers. Oh yeah. Right. This is brilliant. You know, and then, I'm writing and then you can down. send him, I'm you can down. send him the pictures of the, of the stripper with his wang hanging on like his shoulder this. or something. Cause like. I, I, I am that petty. I am that petty. <laughs> the fuck I you package. <laughs> yeah. They're, I love it. I think this is brilliant. They're, they're, oh, and I'm just have, like text them by accident you're gonna on have purpose. one one revenge package is gonna be like level one we'll call it revenge package which will have the eight inch penis coming over your shoulder and you kind of holding it <laughs> like it's like like you know like and yeah. then smiling yeah. and then you're gonna have the like fuck you in the ass fucking picture where there's three dicks in front of you and he's gonna be like oh my I god <laughs> I, I think this is, i think you're onto something i think you are so on to something sick bastard <laughs> No, no, no. People will pay for this. You don't understand. I know. There's a whole will. market. There's a whole market for this. I'm sure. I know. I'm there's, doing it. There's, there's, I'm doing what, it. What do they call it? Revenge revenge photos? Yeah. Where when people um, like they're in a relationship, they have naked pictures of each other in videos. And yeah, they yeah, yeah. Up, they just blast and they let them out. Over social media. Yeah. That's I a, think this is a brilliant idea. Well, this is a better idea because what I just said, the revenge photos of you having pictures of someone else. That you can get charged and sued for, but I don't know. Yeah. Depending where you live, basically that's uh, what do they call that? Uh, Pornography. No. Well, it's no, but it's something else. No, no, no. Yeah. A defamation of character and stuff. Some yeah. it falls along the lines of that because you're basically ruining their image. Yeah. And it's not a mutual. Yeah. Thing. I, I, yeah. That's that's kind of mean, but this that's one is, this mean. one seems fair enough. Yeah. Well, this one's better because it's you. But the only problem is if you send it to that person, they're going to have these pictures of you. 
So if they get I mean, pissed I'm off, okay with that. If they're pissed I'm off okay. enough, they could, they could put that online and stuff. So I feel like me having a good time is quite okay. <laughs> or you could, or there's got to be a way, like a program like Snapchat, where they don't allow you to copy the photos. You can see it, but you can't copy them. It's blocked. Mm. See, That's a good idea, it's like, too. It's like there's a, Disney Plus does this right now because I, I figured this out the other night where I was watching a movie and I wanted to screen record like this scene that I was watching. It was really funny. I was going to send it to someone, but every time I tried to record it, the sound was there, but it was black. So Disney oh, wow, has some yeah. kind of a block. So there's got to be a way to block these photos if you want yeah. to. Yeah, this is that's a brilliant idea though. That's so people them. can't um, steal their movies. But then you know what? It, it's the same thing with music, where they block music on social media. Where if you use like 10 seconds of a song, mm-hmm. it's not the whole song, right? It's a clip. Mm-hmm. And if anything, I'm sending it to someone, which is going to make them want to listen to that or watch that little clip. So right, why don't you right, allow right. that a little bit? Like, okay, fine. I mean, the whole thing recording it. Even though I can get anything online, but recording on my phone, at least allow a certain amount of seconds. Yeah. It, I, I'm promoting yeah. you for fuck's sake. <laughs> I agree. I don't, I don't really think it, it makes much of a difference because you can go to YouTube and pretty much get whatever you want. So um, yeah. they're not really preventing much from happening. But in their minds, I guess, they feel like, you know, download it if you want to buy it. But even if you bought it, they're not letting you upload it. So that, that doesn't make sense either because if I own it now, I should be able to do what I want with it. Yeah, file sharing, but it's the same. I don't know. I don't. I don't like how they 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 give it to us from the start. Like my phone, I used to, I used to have an app where I could record phone calls. So if I was on the phone and they blocked it, Android blocked it. Yeah. Can't, can't do it with any app. Try it record. Yeah. It's all fuzzy. Yeah, can't record phone calls but anymore. But there might be instances where you need that, though. There are. Uh, I found a way around it. I just uh, hold my phone on speaker next to my microphone right here. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. On the but phone, I feel like there's instances it. where people have phone calls these days with different organizations or work or whatever it is that they're doing where they might need to record it. That seems kind of like unfair. It's very unfair because I don't like the fact that you gave it to me and allowed me to do it and then took it away from me. And for the yeah. amount of money that I, that I pay for my phone, you shouldn't be oh, taking yeah. shit away from me. <laughs> this is true. They're like a nine hundred, eight, $900. You shouldn't no, take anything away uh, once you give it to me, as far as I'm concerned. Mine's sixteen hundred dollars. Wow. The Google yeah. Pixel Four XL. Yeah. So it you should be able to. But even if it's something so simple, like I need to record this or a podcast or something, you should be able to have access to that, in my opinion. I know, but too many I guess too many people took advantage of it and too many people got fucked over and we're we're suffering, just like car insurance. <laughs> some other yeah, asshole crashes his car in your neighborhood away. and now you're paying higher premiums because of someone else's mistakes. It's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a question for you. Sure. If you got divorced, would you have a divorce party? And what kind of party would you have? Depends how much money I'm making. <laughs> <laughs> if right. I can afford well, it, you, I'd have a... I, if yeah, money sure. wasn't an object, a, a problem, what would that be? What would we be doing? I don't know. I'm really. I not... gotta decide if I'm gonna be part of your entourage. It depends on the situation. Um, mm-hmm. I probably would have a divorce party, but it also de- if it was I the one that got divorced, or am I the person who divorced? If I divorced and they did something shitty to me, maybe I'd want to go out, you know, get some nice pictures like that. But I'm I'm not much for strippers, anyways. Yeah, me neither. It's just I'm there for the photo op. <laughs> I'm there for the photo op. <laughs> I'm there for the photo op. I'd probably find some girls and have some kind of a party of some kind. And, you know, like a, a, I'll do like Harold and Kumar. I'll do a pantsless party. <laughs> that sounds fun. I hey. feel like it doesn't have to be a party. Like, because if, if money wasn't an object for me, I would probably be on a yacht somewhere. You I... know what I mean? Like, I would be like, let's just celebrate and like, you know, go out on the water or travel. or whatever. I don't think it has to be a party per se. Or it could be a party that lasts a week. See, if you had, if this was in my twenties, I'd be doing what you did. I'm in my thirties. There's other things I want. I'd rather do. I'd probably go to Europe. Yeah. You know. Yeah. What, you know. If like I go to Europe and go to Germany to one of those fucking sex clubs, sex orgies, take pictures there and be yeah. like, "Wee, look at me!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be something. At Amsterdam. Yeah, I get it. Um, yeah, I think that would be fun. I think everybody, you know, should celebrate. I think people should just celebrate life without the divorce party. To be totally honest with you, I well, say, why wait? Well, it's like I, it's, just, I always tell all of my friends. It's it's when I if I ever died and I had a funeral, I'd I'd tell them you know play these certain songs, '90s rock. I'd want 
you know, I don't want waitresses walking around with a tray of whiskey glasses, blaring the music, and, ta- yeah. and everyone drinks. Yeah. Like, have, have fun. I don't want no goddamn funeral where I'm just sitting there and it's all quiet and everyone's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. What are you sorry about? You didn't, ki- it's not your fault. Right? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I honestly, yeah. I, I, I even tell people sometimes it's, people are trying to be polite for anything. They'd be like, oh, sorry. And I, I'm like, you didn't do anything wrong. Don't apologize. Right. It's okay. <laughs> I, I can't stand yeah. it. Yeah. I feel the same way. But I feel like, why wait? Like, why wait to have the party? Why wait? for the divorce party. Why not just enjoy the things that we enjoy now? You know, like, I don't want to wait until like something happens to, to go out and have a good time. Just have a good time now. Or your birthday. It's only once a year or Christmas. Yeah. So see, so maybe you should go to Europe for your birthday. (laughs) My birthday already passed. Okay. Next birthday. In April. (laughs) I I, I can't can't do anything, man. I was going to have some people on my driveway. And do like a little driveway party, like spread apart, and yeah. um, and then Doug Ford, our, our premier, locked down the whole uh, locked down the whole province. Still, a, they they give us a stay at home order. Yeah, still a, though. Yeah, yeah, no, we're wow. one of the worst lockdown uh, uh, countries. Actually, Canada is locked down more than anyone apparently right now, except well, except for some, but in North America, I think we're the worst. Yeah, they're opening up New York, but I don't think we're prepared. I think that they're opening. New York, because of economic reasons, they want everybody back at work. They want people thriving and making money again. They want the economy moving. Um, so I think that's why they're open. I don't think we're anywhere near like being prepared. Yeah, well, you know, it's it 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 is what it is. It's here to stay, and either we we bury our country or we just you got we got to survive, right? Economically, right. We, if people don't work. Yeah. They're going to start getting crazy. Alcoholics. Drugs, suicide. I mean, that's happening the now. The crime rates are up. You know what I mean? The um, people rate, on public crime, assistance. The crime rates are, are up because uh, of those protests and the cops don't want to do anything. <laughs> yeah, well, that too. Um, <laughs> so I think that, you know, I think that's why everyone's like, let's slowly open things back up and get everybody out because sitting here like this is just doing more damage than any good. I know. So they, had, so they locked us down on the, on the Friday. I was going to have people over on the Saturday. And I actually, this was really interesting, is uh, our, per, our premier there, our, our federal government gave the cops uh, back uh, the carding laws, basically. They could pull you over for any reason at any time and ask you what, what you're doing out of your house. Every single police chief the next morning on the Saturday, I was reading the news and listening to the news. All the police chiefs came out and says, no, we're not going to take the new powers. We're just going to go about our regular duties and we're not, we're not doing that. That's, that's an invasion of people's rights and it's wrong so oh fuck i wasn't supposed to drink that oh i put something in a water bottle and i forgot it was in there um Are you okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just i thought it was water and it was just some dirt like dirty crap i put in the water bottle oh yeah ugh. anyway so after i heard the police chiefs say this i called my local police station and said hey listen so today I was going to have a few people on my driveway, but then last night we went on, on a stay at home order, like a new lockdown. And I'm like, if I have people over and an officer drives by, what's the deal? And he goes, well, we're told to educate you and ask you to disperse. We're, we're, we're not taking in the, the new orders. We're not going to be pulling people over. We like, we're way too busy to deal with all that. Right. He's got, he's like, we have way more, more important things like real crimes. And so I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, so if I see an officer and he does stop, what's going to happen? Is we're going to get fined? And he goes, no. He says, we're told, especially in this region, that to just educate you a little bit about why you shouldn't do this and ask you if, it's, if he thinks there's too many people, he's going to ask you to disperse. He goes, right. you don't give him problems, he won't find you. You give him a problem, you got a problem. I said, oh, oh, well, fuck it. So I called some of my friends back and I said, hey, listen, let's do this. Half of them says, no, nah, we're on lockdown. He says, yeah, but I t- talked to the cops. This is what they said. And like, yeah, well, we're not comfortable, right? And I'm so, okay, so like half the people showed up. So I didn't have to cancel the Saturday. I could have just been like, fuck it. Let's just wing it and see what yeah. happens. Like, and I'm, I, I yeah. should have been a little bit more smarter and been like, like the cops are fucking have time for this shit, right? There's not enough fucking right. cops around here to deal with everyone yeah. outside. So, yeah. yeah, I ended up with half the party. And that's what happened. But that sounds cool. At least you had a party. Here they were saying we were, they were limiting people to like, 
10 people in your house or you can only have a party with like 12 people or something like that. I was and then, like seven you know, people did it. Or eight. Yeah. And then people, people didn't want to go out. People were actually saying like, I'm not going, I don't want to, like, I'm not going to anyone's house. So I'm not going to be around anyone. Yeah, but you New know? York's so a bunch pe- of buildings. You can't hide in the backyard. It's all apartments. <laughs> and it's condos. <laughs> yeah. You can't really hide anywhere. So that's what happened. But a lot of people were also sneaking around doing whatever they wanted. Yeah, people are doing you know, it here. They, 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 the cops are only hitting up people who have massive parties and they get caught. Like there, there's a guy, yeah. I, I, there's this town, it's called Brampton, right? This was actually, this was months ago, but this guy had a, a party, fuck, a lot of hundreds, hundreds of people. They hit him with a $110,000 fine. Wow. They, they counted the people. I think, no, it's like, like a hundred people or something. He said, we're going to fine you a thousand dollars per head. And as they're walking out, they're like one, two, three, four, five, six. And then at the end, you're like, it's a $110,000 ticket. That's crazy. Yeah, but a so. hundred people sounds kind of crazy if there's a pandemic outside too. Yeah, I don't know. That's, I don't <laughs> want to talk anymore about that pandemic. It's all over the news. People can you can turn on any channel and listen to it. But um, yeah, the the thing about your divor- divorce party, which is interesting, like you said, pe- people <laughs> don't get it, but people are doing more things to celebrate in other ways. Like for instance, I was hearing on the radio. Have you heard of extreme embalming? No, what's that? You know when you die, they embalm your body? Oh, yeah. They have people, like, standing up now. Yeah. So they're, like, sitting in chairs. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's like, okay, regular embalming, if you're in your casket, if you lift up that body, it's just going to fall back over. So they do it, right. like, triple time. Like, I don't know what they fill you up with, but it basically leaves you stiff. And the, this one guy, I forget, I think it was in America, and he was he was, like, some kind of professional drummer. So at his funeral, they set up his drum set, and they, like, you know, ex- did extreme embalming on him, and he was sitting up holding his drumsticks at the drums. <laughs> yeah, no, there's people doing it here. There are people oh. um, sitting up in chairs at their own funeral. <laughs> they're dead. <laughs> That's so fucked up. That's so scary. Imagine walking into a funeral <laughs> and you see somebody sitting up, uh, you know, holding a drink. <laughs> You're gonna be like, um, I thought you were dead. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know how I would feel if I saw that. I don't like going to funerals as it is. I definitely don't want to go there and see the dead person like looking at me. Yeah. Especially, <laughs> if, especially if they do some crazy shit for like from, from the 89 Batman where they make his smile just stuck on his face. Yeah. Like, and they're like, but there's people really doing it and then putting them to like, like hang out normally. Like they're like sitting at a table. Like you said, he's playing his drums. It's like a guy sitting in the corner at the house. Like, that's just crazy to me. Like, I, I don't know how well, comfortable I would that's, be. That's not the craziest one, actually. The, the craziest funeral event that you can get. I, I, I should have looked this one up and got the name of the guy. You could probably look him up if you Google it. But basically, it, it was in England, I think it was. And what he does is before you die, you pay him, like let's say $10,000. And he will, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He'll crash your funeral. So just say your your brother cheated on you with your wife and you knew about it, but they never, like, you kept it, it was in secret. Or if someone did something bad to you and you didn't want them at your funeral, make a list of all these people you want him, like, want to say fuck you to. And right before they bury you at the <laughs> funeral, this guy shows up and he'll get on the fucking mic stand and he'll be like, hey, where's fucking Uncle Bob? And he'll be like, I'm right here. He'll be like, oh, well, um, well, he, he told me that you. he fucked his wife and he, he paid me to come <laughs> here until you get the fuck out of the funeral. Right? And he'll go, is... around to ev- he'll go around to anyone at the funeral that fucked with you that you don't want at your funeral. He'll tell them that to leave. is brilliant. Yeah. Talk about solving a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> what kind of business can I start that solves a problem? And I'll just crash funerals. I'll get prepaid for it. And I'll have a good time. Whoever thought of that is a genius. Yeah, but you got to be some type of person because you could come up to a funeral where, you know, there might be like, like fucking cousin Bob could be a psychopath, you know? He's, like, I wonder how, I'd love to talk to this guy and see like, how many times he gets attacked. He needs his own show. That's what he needs. He needs a camera. He needs a GoPro. <laughs> but he goes to these funerals National so Ge- that we can like watch it on TV. Oh my God, National Geographic. I, I guess I should track this guy down. I'm sure it wouldn't be hard to get him. 
Because I had heard him on the radio. Because that time. would be a that would be amazing. Can you imagine? Like I'm gonna watch this show, and this is what he does. He just you know talks to the person, and then shows up at their funeral. I gotta look this guy up. Maybe he does Talk have a show. Content. I don't know. I, I heard him once talking about what, like his um his career his, his job or whatever on the radio. They were talking for like twenty minutes or so. It's fucking hilarious. But yeah, but I love it. People are getting crazy. I hey. think it's a brilliant idea. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna cut it there. I think that was good. All right. I'm trying to keep my podcast Sounds shorter good. now. I've had them for they get long sometimes, and it's like oh. Yeah, I try to say about. 45 minutes or so i feel like after a while people tend to get bored or they get kind of all over the place so i try to keep it enough that it's short and sweet and they want more exactly because that's how i like it yeah. sometimes and then plus i'm not a, like a, like a big celebrity right where people want to listen to you for a long time and i, I notice even when i'm on youtube i listen to steven crowder ben shapiro candace owens dr yeah. Jordan peterson and if they have long videos i look at the topic and i'm like like if it's over 45 minutes or so i'm like Okay, if it's an interesting enough topic that I want to hear, I'll listen to it. But but for the most part, I like to listen to more of their shorter talk, 10, 15, 25 minutes or so. So I'm starting to like... Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming on. That was great. And anytime you need me, you know how to find me. Perfect. All right. (laughs) Thank you so much. Toodles. Be well. Stay safe.